Hello my people, Akara is a special Nigerian breakfast. It's not a breakfast you eat in a hurry. That's why we mostly have it during the weekend so that we can settle in and enjoy it and savor it. Today, after eight years, I am uploading an update to my Akara recipe. I have a lot to say in this video, so get a drink and relax. I'll try my best to make it as fun as a recipe video can be. <laughs> Making Akara is science and today we're going to dissect it. Are you ready to go into the chemistry lab with me? Are you? Are you? Akara does not need a lot of ingredients. You need beans. You can use either black-eyed beans or brown beans. These two types of beans have a natural flavor you don't want to interfere with. So please, I take God beg you, don't load Akara with a lot of unnecessary seasonings. Habanero or scotch bonnet pepper to your taste. Salt also to your taste. Onions and vegetable oil for frying. Use any tasteless or odorless vegetable oil if you want your akara to have the classic taste. I'm using sunflower oil and then I'm going to make some of the akara with a twist and I'll use this sweet pepper or fresh paprika or Italian pepper to achieve that. If you're in Nigeria, use tatashi. Don't use red bell peppers, just don't. <laughs> First, we soak wash and separate the skin from the beans if you watched my last video you already know everything all the details and story behind these cracked or broken beans if you didn't i'll put the link in the description box below so you can go catch up to open the description box click the title of this video below some people do not yet understand why some of us still suffer so far ahead <laughs> Still suffer to use freshly peeled beans when there is beans flour and already peeled beans. First of all, already peeled beans is not common in Nigeria, like in Obodo Ibu. I wouldn't mind using that one, but I have something to say about that later. But you see that beans flour, unless I made it myself or I see a brand that makes it well, I will never use it. The only time I bought that beans powder or flour was when some people requested that I prepare moi moi with it. If you see where they make that beans powder eh? I mean the majority of the beans powder you buy in the market, you will not buy it ever again. They normally use black eyed beans to do it because it's white. They crack it to look pretty much like the one I'm peeling here. Then they blow off the black eyes and then they put it back into the machine and grind it into powder. That means all the preservatives, sometimes chemicals they use in preserving the beans, the skin of the beans, all the stones, all the bad bean seeds go into the beans powder. Yeah. If you've ever wondered why the akara and moi moi you prepare with beans powder never feels or tastes good, this is why. Meals prepared with that beans powder never taste as good as those prepared with freshly peeled beans. You saw at Christmas when my brother-in-law's wife prepared akara with beans flour. It was fluffy and tasted good because she made the beans flour herself using the right procedure. Anyway, use whatever you want, but I, Flo, I like to enjoy my meals and I'm very mindful of what goes into my body. So I always have trust issues with anything powder. That's why I'll never buy ground obono or ground ibusi from the shops. If that thing comes in whole seeds, that's what I'm buying. Then I can sort, clean and grind it myself. In the last video, some people expressed concerns that there will be sand and stones in the meal prepared with these cracked beans. Okay, let me address that now because I omitted that in the video. Usually, after peeling beans, even if it's whole bean seeds, you pour a generous quantity of water into the bowl of beans. Stones and sand are heavier than bean seeds, so, you know, the stones will go to the bottom of the bowl. Gently scoop the bean seeds at the top and trust me, you won't take any stones because they are at the bottom. As you get close to the bottom, you do that more carefully to make sure you don't scoop the stones and you will see them at the bottom staring at you. This is how we used to wash rice in those days. Those ones that contain stones, they are back in the market now anyway. <laughs> Yeah, 
you shake the bowl like that so the lighter bean seeds come forward leaving the stones behind see them <laughs> Then leave it to soak for at least one hour. This ensures that you get a good blend, especially if you have a medium range blender like mine. Okay, now we are getting to the scientific part. Blender, blender, blender. Flo, which blender is best for a Nigerian kitchen? I've burnt three blenders in the past three months. This my blender has 1200 watts power. The brand is Hata, as written on it, but do you know that the blender I used in my Akara video that I uploaded 8 years ago had only 500 watts power? And look at the smooth blend it gave me back then. You don't have to buy the same brands you see me use. They may not even be available where you live. Just go to where you buy electrodomestic appliances, see what they have, note them down with the power ratings, go home, look at the reviews for those blenders online then go back to the shop and buy the one with the best reviews make sure the cover of the blender has a peep hole for the power rating from my experience any blender that has at least 600 watts power can serve you in a nigerian kitchen can blend almost everything you need to blend in your kitchen everything depends on how you handle the blender even if you have the most powerful blender if you stress the blender it will die you need some tricks to make your blender work for you. So first, soak the beans to reduce the stress for your blender. We've done that. Then blend a small quantity of beans at a time, a little bit above the height of the blades of the blender. Don't fill the blender with beans because a vortex will not form when you overfill the blender. Then add a small quantity of water, just enough to help the blades of the blender move. Especially because we are blending these beans for Akara. Add a small quantity of water, start the blender, and as soon as you hear the blender struggling, you add a little bit more water, repeat that till the blades of the blender pick up. You need the resulting bean space as thick as possible. That means you should add as little water as possible. Also, the less water you add, the easier it will be for the blender to blend the beans. But at the same time, you don't want the blender to suffer by not adding enough water. That's where the challenge lies. On the other hand, if you add too much water, the beans will be swimming inside there and the blades of your blender will never catch them to blend them. You see the vortex forming, that's the funnel <laughs> that is going on inside the blender. Sometimes all you need to do is turn the blender off and turn it on again to initiate a vortex. And this vortex can only happen if the cover of the blender has a peep hole. And it's also through that hole you add water while blending. So it's very important. I know, I know, with very powerful blenders, you don't have to go through all these tricks and suffer, suffer. <laughs> but the truth is that a majority of us have these average blenders in our homes. Hence, why I am sharing the tips I use to get mine to work for me and serve me for a long time. My other blender that you guys know, the Ufesa one, it's still here. The engine still works, but the problem is that I noticed a crack on the glass, on the jug, so I stopped using it because I don't want it to scatter one day on me. <laughs> yeah, but the engine still works. When done, pour into a bowl. And for the one with a twist, I'll be adding sweet pepper or fresh paprika to color it. You know how we use pepper to color moi moi? Yeah. This is the quantity I'll be adding to this quantity of beans. I chopped it into pieces to help my blender. Then blend using the same tricks. Remember, add as little water as possible. Do you know that in Nigeria, when they are blending beans for Akara with the heavy duty grinders, 
they don't even add water after grinding they may use a tiny amount of water to rinse out the beans paste stuck in the machine and that's all the water they will add but with these average home blenders you need to add water just make it as little as possible Another scientific part, do you know that beans contains oligosaccharides, the sugar molecules that make you feel bloated after eating beans? This is what acts as the natural leavening agent when you are making akara. It makes your akara form a ball and float in the oil. It's like when we add yeast when making buff buff. The yeast will help the buff buff form a ball as well as float in the oil. Beans comes pre-equipped with its own natural yeast as I like to call it. Freshly peeled beans still has all or most of this natural yeast intact unlike already peeled or ground beans. Making freshly peeled beans the best for making akara. If you don't have a hand mixer, cover it and leave it to rest so that the natural yeast will be activated. You can also use just a pot cover or a clean kitchen towel to cover it. Remember, you only need to do this step if you do not have a hand mixer. Then leave it in a cupboard for about one hour. I have mine in my oven but it's turned off. Next, I chop the onions and the scotch bonnet pepper like this. After one hour or so, you use a mortar to energize the natural yeast. A combination of leaving it to rest and stirring with the pestle gives better results than when you go straight from grinding or blending to mortar. If you don't have a mortar, after leaving it to rest for about one hour, blend it again in your blender. You will see that it is smoother and more fluffy. Do that for a while. Yeah, it takes a while. Keep going till it's well aired, looking fluffy and kind of whiter. But if you have a hand mixer, one, you don't even need to cover it and leave it to rest for some time. And two, a mixer makes your life easier. And if you have a stand mixer, your life has been made even much easier. <laughs> Use the whisk attachment for that. With stand mixers, you don't have to stand there holding the mixer for the duration with everything spattering all over the place, no. I have this toy stand mixer that is perfect for the quantity of akara we make so I just set it and leave it to do the job while I do other things, yeah. While the whisking is happening, set some oil to heat up. Akara should be deep fried so make sure you have at least 2 inches depth of oil in there. My frying pan is quite deep. If you don't have a deep frying pan, use a pot. Some people use red palm oil to fry akara to get the traditional taste, so use it if you wish. Back to the whisking, it's been running for about 10 minutes now. You can see that this colored one is lighter in color and the texture compared to when we started is smoother. Let's test if it floats. The moment of truth. You see, bang on the top, it does not go to the bottom at all. That's how you tell a well whisked akara. Even if it goes to the bottom because you poured in a lot, it will pop right back to the surface as long as you whisk it well. <laughs> I'm going to bite my tongue today. You can also see that the akara is bubbling away so the oil is hot enough. So add the rest of the ingredients and fry. This size of akara I am making today is called akarandiukwa, which means super size akara. <laughs> 
I remember when we were going for GCE and John Blessings in Enugu in those days, te te. <laughs> there was one woman that used to fry akarandukwa near our lesson venue. She starts frying the akara just before the lesson starts at 6 p.m. So as you're strolling into the lesson venue, you could perceive the aroma all the way from, we could perceive it all the way from Bishop Anyogu. <laughs> Yeah, the lesson was at Robinson Street Primary School in Enugu. And she used to fry the akara with avop vegetable oil. As soon as you turn the corner, the aroma hits your nose, man. Oh my days. Who knows about avop vegetable oil? Who knows about this story that I'm telling? Let me know in the comments. 042 people, gather here. 042. <laughs> the aroma of this akara will be entering your nose as you're attending the first lesson. Your body will be in that classroom but your spirit, your brain, your thinking faculty will be at the Akara joint. <laughs> Everything the teacher is saying will be flying through your head as you count the minutes till the lesson is over. So we would rush out to go and buy Akara and wash it down with chilled cook. Chayo! Have you liked this video yet? Have you? No? So in spite of all this science I am teaching here, in spite of all this story that I am telling you, you have not liked yet. You have not subscribed yet. Don't have a stone heart now. Your heart should be as soft and fluffy as this Akara. Biko like, subscribe, share. Dalo, dalo. Let's check the white one. Looks good. Scoop the quantity you can fry in one batch into a bowl. Add the rest of the ingredients and mix. Then fry. You see how it's floating? If it does not float, it's either you did not whisk it enough or the mix is too watery or your oil is not hot enough or all of the above. With this video, it cannot be all of the above for you. Oh. With this video, your fear of making akara is gone forever. Please make sure you prepare this akara this weekend to shame your enemies and send me a feedback. Fry the underside on medium heat till the middle has risen up like this. You can see the slight cracks at the top of the akara. That's how you know that it has, that half of the inside has cooked. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with this akara ndukwa, you have to be patient. You need medium heat. Low heat will make the akara soak in a lot of oil. High heat will make the akara start burning before the inside is well cooked. Strike a balance with the heat, okay? Pretty much the same principles of frying of both Nigerian buns or Nigerian egg rolls. When done, you can fry the tiny ones too. Use a tablespoon to scoop it. And here's what the insides look like. First, the colored one. And the white one. Can you see how fluffy it is inside? That's the natural yeast at work. Then make the akamo to go with it. Do you know how to make akamo?
akamo? Do you? Do you? How many times has making akamo put you to shame in the public of Igwe Mado? Tell the truth now to shame the devil, oh. <laughs> When done, drown the akamo with correct peak evaporated milk. Ooh, there you have it. The perfect Nigerian breakfast. Don't forget to like and share this scientific video with your friends and family. Bye bye. See you.